Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the ancillary component of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Before us we have the professional teardrop fully polished ratchets. It's quite a bit to say. <laughs> it's a mouthful. So these are a derivative of these guys. We've already talked about these before. The teardrop Craftsman Ratchet or in the position in the timeline amongst those who have a mechanical similarity or physical similarity, the fourth generation. So these are an offshoot of what we just saw and they tear down and repair the same but since I did not include them with the standard teardrop I'll just go ahead and do it now in the event that you are looking for an individual teardown for this for whatever reason. Let's go through the product numbers. Here we've got the big guy half inch. We've got product number 44814. 3 eighths at 44813. And quarter inch. Whoa. That is, whoa, at four four eight one two so in our tradition we'll work on the half inch because it's easier for me to work on <laughs> and you don't want to be here all day watching me struggle the littler guys are a little bit harder to work on because you have smaller spaces and it requires more dexterity so we'll go ahead and get our little workstation set up yeah we're going to be applying some downward force, so again, if you're working on a softer surface or a surface that could mar your tool, you might want to put a shop towel, a, a standard cloth towel, anything to kind of protect your tool. We'll go ahead and grab the, the medium snap ring pliers. These are the Craftsman branded ones, but Channel Lock is the, the creator of these, but under the Craftsman name we've got 47412 or you can use any other brands, the Snap-ons, the Williams brand, whatever, whatever works best for you. I just like these because of their versatility. You want to have the copper snaps adapter right here when you're doing this. Be careful, these snap rings are very, very, very high energy. So wear safety glasses, get your wife's stuff out of the way, Simply pull out, like so. Let's get this retention plate out of the way. Get the gear out of the way. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more light, if that'll help out. A little bit, we got a little bit more of a shadow effect. All right, so we're gonna use the same trick that we did on the standard teardrop to get the pull out. So what you'll do, and since we're doing this without a vise, look at that, like a champ. Go ahead and give it a swiggle. And then you'll want to pull down and rock out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to rock out here at the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Woo! Alright. You can use a stick, any kind of probe, whatever works for you. I'm just using these Craftsman picks. You want to see if you can't sneak out that bearing right there whoop so we've got the the spring and the bearing seated right there we'll go ahead and pick that out come on little buddy don't make me look bad in front of my fans <laughs> yeah right all right we'll just pick the bearing out easy peasy let's take a look at the inside So as with the standard ratchet, you have a ridge here, that is the location of where your snap ring seats. And here we have the housing for the gear, there's the housing for the pawl, and then right in here, fairly shallow, especially on the half inch, is where the spring seats. We'll flip it over to the front. So we've got some dirt here. And some excess lube. But yeah, that's what this looks like, naked. So 
What you want to do is clean out any kind of artifacts or dirt that may be present, but I've already worked on these, so we're good to go in that regard. Let's go ahead and zoom out, take a, take a roll call of what we got. So when you take this apart, you should have a spring, a, a bearing, your pole. Here's what it looks like. You have the three ridges that I was talking about, the three teeth. This actually counts as an area that it engages. So it's one, two, three. A little nub there. Here's the selector. This is of the, the plastic variety. And then we have the retention plate, the gear, and the snap ring. So, fairly basic. Nothing really new here. Alrighty, where did I put my handy dandy little little tool? Alright, we got everybody in the roll call. Except Super Paper Clip. <laughs> okay, so we had a lot better success with the insertion of the pull when we rendered the bearing immobile with a big old gob of grease. <laughs> and again, we're not doing this. This is this is the poor man's way of doing this, okay? We're not using a vise. I'm not going to attach a vise to my wife's table because she would murder me. <laughs> and I would like to finish the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Thank you. <laughs> so what you want to do is go ahead and grab your spring. You can use a probe, a stick, whatever you can use to hold it into position. What I like to do is just go like that with my right angle probe. Make sure it's just seated generally in position. Get your pawl, or your selector I should say, seated in there. And you can set it, I to try to set it at its maximum upward position. Set it down. Alright, we're going to go ahead and zoom in, and hopefully my big fat arms won't get in the way like they did last time. So, the goal is to get that bearing seated on the spring right there, hold it down with a paper clip, and get the pollen all in one smooth move. So the grease is a good way to kind of hold the bearing immobile while you're attempting to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and get it in its general position. Oh, you bastard. With my handy dandy paper clip. Get my paper clip in, in a flat position. And I'm sure there are better ways to do this than what I'm doing. However, I haven't the time. <laughs> Right now, I'm already scrounging for time putting these together for you guys. So we're in good shape. And bada boom. Cakewalk! Boom! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. See guys, I told you I could nail it in one time. Honest, I, you know, just had a little technical difficulty last time. So you'll know you're ready to rock and roll when you see the bearing. Look at that guy. Having a happy old time in his little spot. You want to put your uh, Paul in the neutral position, right in the middle, it makes life easier for dropping in your gear. I mean, look at that. Boof. Cakewalk. And it's like I said before, this design in particular I like because it is easier to maintain overall. Don't get me wrong, the, the much loved ratchets, these guys, that had, a, I think it was a 32 year run in the Craftsman timeline. Uh, they're awesome, but they're a little bit more difficult to maintain. And we'll talk about that in that particular video. So we'll go ahead, grab our snap ring, get our snap ring pliers, compress. Come on now, little buddy. Don't let me down. Oh boy, I'm nerfing it, people. There we go. Compress and apparently let go too early. Get in there, you punk. There we go. Bada boom. Nice work, everybody. 
<laughs> and you'll just grab your your rag, get rid of some of that excess lube that's bound to present itself after you're done working on it. You can use any non-corrosive solvent to clean the surface. I'd recommend that just so you don't have any opportunity for dirt to attract your tool. You can use WD-40 re realistically if most people have that hanging around. Just hit it with this and boom. Shine up your ratchet and you're done! So these are the professional teardropped, fully polished ratchets. Look my no hands. <laughs> we did it. Put all back together. Thanks for watching guys.